Good morning. As we gather today, let us ask the Lord's blessing on us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Spirit be with you. So we begin our Mother of Perpetual Help devotions. Let us gather together to honor our Mother of Perpetual Help and seek her intercession on our behalf. Perpetual Help, as a true mother, you sacrifice your own needs for <coughs> sending yourself to God's will and giving birth to our Savior. As your son hung upon the cross, he gifted you to us as our mother, and you have acted on our behalf ever since. May you inspire your children to likewise be self-sacrificing rather than self-serving, to give ourselves in loving service to our sisters and brothers. Mary, you were chosen to be the mother of the Son of God. To protect him, you left home and family and became an immigrant in a foreign land. To help protect all those parents who make the same hard choice today. Give us the compassion to reach out to those mothers and fathers who have given up home, family, and heritage for the sake of their children. May our nation be receptive to the dispossessed, the poor, and the suffering children of the world. Keep us always mindful that we are all the children of God, and our Redeemer died to save all people. Our Mother Mary, as you rejoiced over the gift of your own Son, you wept for all those who lost sons in the slaughter of the innocents. You cried out for all those who, defenseless children whose lives were taken by those motivated out of fear and self-concern. Perpetual help, protect all innocent life, especially the defenseless. You instill in your children sanctity for all life. Assure those who have been blessed with the gift of life in their womb that they are not alone and that their child is a gift from God. Inspire us to care for all children, born and unborn, especially those who need a mother's love and protection. May we, your children, seek to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, heal the sick, and comfort the afflicted. Mary, from the moment the angel Gabriel first appeared to you until you were assumed into heaven, you pondered everything in your heart and reflected upon its meaning. Help us to be open to the Word of God. May the Word be planted upon our hearts, and may we spend our lives meditating upon its meaning, and strive each day to proclaim the Gospel in word and deed. Mary, when your friends at Canaan were in need, when they had run out of wine and joy, you stepped in and fled to the one you knew had a blessing, the one who could restore their joy. Mary, as Jesus embraced the public ministry and went forth to proclaim the good news, you became his first disciple and spent your life in his service. Mother of perpetual help, we turn to you as our model of discipleship. Inspire us to humbly follow the Good Shepherd. May we spend our lives in loving and serving our God. As disciples, may we always seek to do the will of God and mold our lives in the likeness of your Son, and our Lord Jesus. Mary, you wept at the foot of the cross as a sword of sorrow pierced your heart. You had to witness the Son, your Son, suffer the cruel and merciless death penalty of the cross. Inspire us to be compassionate to all who suffer. Help us to leave judgment in the hands of your Son, and instead reach out with the hands of mercy to those who are trapped in darkness until we all walk in the light of your Son. Let us renew our act of consecration, united with the members of the confraternity of our Mother of Perpetual Help here and throughout the world. We consecrate ourselves to your service. We promise to renew this dedication once a month and frequently to receive the sacraments. 
we beg you to obtain for us the grace to imitate your great servant, St. Alphonsus, in his love for you and your son. May our Mother Mary be your constant help. May she be a true example to you of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ by surrendering your life to the will of God. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you always. Amen. As you know, uh, not only is it that we, we celebrating, you know, we, every Tuesday, Mother Perpetual Help devotions, but today it is a special feast of the Blessed Mother of her, her Assumption into Heaven. And so uh, on this day, we want to pray the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul, into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to, the, to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all died, so to in Christ shall all be brought to life. But each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits. Then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes to the end. When the hands of the kingdom of God is God and Father. When he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all of his enemies under his foot. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. Israel, 
for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, again, we celebrate the rising of Mary into heaven. We have no account of that, really, in the scriptures. And so today we hear the story of Mary after she was told that she was to be the mother of God, going to her, her cousin Elizabeth. Uh, that, that's, uh, you know, we don't know a whole lot about Mary. This particular story is very dear to us, right? Mary visiting her, her cousin. But again, we don't have any idea what it was like at the moment that Mary, and, and some scripture scholars, they don't really know if Mary even died. I think she must have died at the end of her life, but she didn't have to, uh, there was no, uh, there was no time for, you know, to, to mourn her death. There was no burial. She rose sometime after her death into heaven. And again, there's no account of that in scripture, so we can only imagine what that was like, like Jesus rising into heaven. Today we have a cloudy day outside. I like to picture when Mary was raised into heaven, a perfectly blue sky rising up into heaven. And heaven is a place, you know, that we don't really, really know where it is. It's a different dimension, I guess. It's not really in the sky necessarily. It's another dimension, but somewhere kind of away from us. But I can imagine Mary sitting with her son there, Jesus. All of us, all of us were conceived and we lived for nine months within our own mother. Think about that. Kind of an amazing thing that we spent the first nine months, roughly, of our life in the womb of our mother, connected to her by the umbilical cord. Every one of us, that's why we have our belly button. <laughs> Every one of us was connected to our mother and what she ate, what she drank, what she breathed, came into us. We were so totally dependent, absolutely totally dependent upon our mothers in the womb. And she gave us life, right? And so that time that we were brought forth into our world. But I like that image of being in the womb, being so totally connected to our mothers. And I think that in some ways, you still have an umbilical cord connected to Mary, right? In that way. We are so totally, that's why we come here on a Tuesday and today, Actually, I'm, I'm great, uh, grateful that uh, when the, uh, this feast day is on a Tuesday, we're able to do this uh, feast with our mother of perpetual health. But we're so, like the umbilical cord of our own mother, we as Christians, as Catholics, we know that we are totally connected to her in that way, even now. Without her, and we're not making her into God right now, but without her, we have no life, in a sense. It is through her that she gave us the, the Son of God. In a spiritual sense, without her, we have no life. Because without her, the Son of God would not have come into our world to justify us, to make us the true children of God once again, to take away sin. So we're really indebted in that way to the Blessed Mother. We're indebted to her for saying yes to the angel. We're indebted to her for saying yes to being the mother of, of Christ. She was, in, a, in, in again, the real way, he was connected to her in an umbilical cord, right? I mean, she was pregnant. He was connected to her. What she ate, what she drank, went right into him, physically. And we then spiritually are connected to her in just the same way. If she had not brought forth the Son of God, we would not be here today in this setting. So today we owe her uh, 
much gratitude, and we also uh, reach out to her as we would our own mother to help us in our lives. When we were born, our mother cradled us, nurtured us, helped us. And in the same way, Mary does that with us, even as adults. She cares for us, she nurtures us, she helps us in our own lives. And we know that, that's why we're here. That's why so many times we come with our petitions to the Blessed Mother, asking Mary to help us in our lives with whatever might be going on. So this day is a very important day, it's a special day for us. We celebrate, again, every Tuesday, our Mother Perpetual Help. But today we remember Mary in a very special way, as she did not have to go into a tomb or into the earth. She rose in a special way to her own son. You know, she wasn't, her body wasn't corrupted in that sense. She is now sitting at the right hand of Jesus herself. And again, because it's the a feast day, well, if I can find it here, we'll pray the profession of faith. Please stand. We pray this every week, but unless I have it in front of me, <laughs> we mess it up. All right. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So now let us present our petitions. We pray for the church. May she always be a voice of justice in the world, defending those who stand in harm's way. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our leaders, for Pope Francis, Bishop Mitchell, and all the leaders of church and state. May they be true servants of God's people. We pray to the Lord. We pray for peace. May the hostility that exists between your children cease, Lord. May you de dispel our fears and prejudices and open our eyes to your presence dwelling within each of us. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the, all children. May your mother and our mother Mary be a constant help and protection for the children of the world, born and unborn. May we be a worthy example for our children to follow in living the gospel of love and peace, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the oppressed. Send us, Lord, as you sent your son Alphonsus, as your ambassadors, to serve and defend the poor and most abandoned, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick. Place your healing hand upon all who seek healing in body, mind, and spirit especially those in our families, our parish, our friends, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the dead. Prepare a place in your kingdom for our beloved. 
and comfort those who mourn their passing, especially our families, our friends, our parish. We pray to the Lord. Today we have one intention. Dearest Mother, please help my friend Alina keep her in peace of mind. She makes the decision to stop her dialysis. She is very close to your son, and I'm sure you will know her as your son as she may, meets him face to face. For this, we pray to the Lord. For any other special intention we have now in the silence of our own hearts. For these, we pray to the Lord. Ever good and loving God, we ask you please to hear and to grant these prayers we place before you this day through Christ our Lord. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, may it become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord. And through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed to heaven, May our hearts aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. For today the mother the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church is coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son the author of all life. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. We humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Mitchell, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Alphonsus, St. Louis, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you. We offer to one another the Christ sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we to be called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ be the best. For those that may be coming to Mass uh, virtually or later, I pray our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you in the sacrament, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, for you are already there, and unite myself totally to you. Amen. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having received the sacraments of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you this day, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is now ended. 
Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.